The National Broadcasting Company presents... Eyes Aloft! Army flight. One, single, very low, seen, ten, Gabriel, four, overhead, southwest. Eyes aloft, watching the sky, watching the planes flying the lanes up above. Eyes aloft. Eyes aloft. The 4th Fighter Command of the United States Army Air Forces, in cooperation with West Coast radio stations, presents this series of programs honoring the 150,000 volunteers, civilian observers, and filter center workers whose round-the-clock vigilance keeps watchful guard of the Pacific Coast against attack by enemy planes. Eyes the law, night and day, will help protect the U.S. This is Ken Carpenter. Tonight, we present a special broadcast. Many ground observers and filter center workers do not understand the complete workings of the aircraft warning service. What happens after you, the observer, make an army flash and hang up the phone? Of hundreds of ground observers and filter center workers, tonight we present an explanation of how the aircraft warning service works. Now, this program is a combination of several other broadcasts we've already presented. However, hearing the explanation a second time of so vast a system may help you to understand more clearly what is back of the great work you, as a ground observer or filter center worker, are doing. You're asked to listen carefully. And now, once again, your eyes aloft narrator, Gain Whitman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Last September, this program, with the sanction of A2, Army Intelligence, released a detailed description of the operation of a filter center. Obviously, because much of the work is so highly secretive, we were not permitted to tell you the entire story. In fact, we haven't been allowed to know it all. However, what we told you greatly helps to explain how you, as a ground observer at some lonesome post, fit into this vast aircraft warning service. Today, without releasing information of value to the enemy, we wish to repeat portions of several of our September broadcasts. How much is your home worth? Wait, we doubt if you can answer that. Your banker can put a dollars and cents value on your house and property, but home, that's something more. It takes a wife, a husband, children, family, loved ones to make a home. You can't place a monetary value on such precious things. But value them as you do. What are you doing to help protect them from possible destruction by invasion of enemy planes? If you don't know about the aircraft warning service the Army has established to protect the things you cherish. If you don't know about the 150,000 civilian volunteers who help operate it, then listen now. This is the way the system works. Let it be understood first that there are more than 2,000 observation posts on the Pacific coast dotted every few miles from the Mexican to the Canadian border. Just as an example, suppose that an observer at some isolated post back in the hills sights a plane. Gosh, first plane I've seen this month. Got to report to the Army pronto. Uh, Army flash. Army, go ahead, please. One. One. By motor. By motor. High. High. Seen. Seen. 17 Harold 4. 17 Harold 4. Overhead. Overhead. Northeast. Northeast. Thank you. Say, wonder what that plane is. Never saw one just like that before. Hmm. Wonder where it's heading for. But to where did that telephone call go? Who answered the phone? That woman's voice. To whom was the observer speaking? Well, when his local telephone girl heard the observer say, Army Flash, she knew that she was to give his call immediate preference over all others. She threw a switch and connected him immediately with one of the many nerve centers on the Pacific coast. Connected him with a filter center. A filter center located at some unknown address. Yes, the local operator threw a switch. And the observer's voice was carried over perhaps hundreds of miles of telephone line to a woman, a plotter, sitting at a gigantic map table in the nearest filter center. Here is the observer's call coming in. 
Army. Flash. Army. Go ahead, please. One. One. By motor. By motor. High. High. Scene. Scene. Seventeen, Harold four. Seventeen, Harold four. Overhead. Overhead. Northeast. Northeast. Thank you. Uh, pardon me, lady. Uh, what is that little thing you have in your hand? Well, this is a tip. A tip? Mm-hmm. Is that the real name of the gadget? It looks kind of like a foot and take top. Well, that's the real name of it. A tip. Well, while that observer was reporting that plane, you kept twisting the tip. What were you doing to it? Well, I was rotating its sides and pointer ends. You see, it's coded to correspond with what the observer reported to me. Well, I don't quite understand. Would you explain? Well, you see, the observer reported one by motor. You know that for every plane in the air in this particular section of the Pacific Coast, we show that plane as a target on this particular filter board. Target? Mm-hmm. That sounds ominous. But do you mean to tell me that every airplane that flies in the air is accounted for these days? Oh, absolutely. Army, Navy, commercial transport, all planes appear first on this board as a tip. I didn't know that the Army got such complete information on all ships in the air. But why does the Army need it? Well, someone else along the line here will have to answer that question for you. I have no authority to make such a statement. Oh, I'm sorry I asked. Well, it's quite all right. Now, do you want to know more about this tip I'm putting on the board now? I certainly do. Well, the observer reported a plane. So one tip goes on the board, like so. And the observer said it had two motors. So I turned up the side of the tip that tells me that. You see? B. B. That means by motor. Yes. And he said it was high. So I turned up the part that says H. And he said he saw it, not just heard it. So I turned up the green side of the little plastic arrow on top. And then when I put it down on the board in front of me, I pointed it northeast. You see? Yes, but how did you know just where on this mammoth map to set the tip down? Well, the observer told me where to put it. He gave me his code number. That told me he was operating observation post 17 Harold 4. So I placed the tip on the 17 Harold 4 location on the map. But, now, wait, I'm confused. The 17 Harold 4, well, what does that mean? Well, that's the code name of that observer's post. You see, each post has its own code name. Some are like 17 Harold 4. Others have names like ooh, Evergreen 41 and such. And the posts are all marked here on this big table map? Yes. And each post is accurately marked on the particular filter board serving the area in which that post is located. You see, an observer's call is routed to a plotter who has the observer's post right in front of her on the filter board. Well, that's about all I can tell you. I see. Well, tell me, how long does it take you to learn how to do your job as plotter? Oh, may I answer by saying that we're all given adequate training before we're put to work on the big board. Well, what do you do for a living? That is, this work doesn't pay you anything, I know. Well, I'm a housewife. My husband works in a lumberyard. I come here every Tuesday and Friday. <laughs> The filter boards, the giant room-long maps built like a mammoth table, vary in size depending upon the area the filter center serves. And sitting around these boards are sufficient volunteer women to handle all the calls that come in from the observers. These women at the filter board wear telephone headsets. These women are the plotters. They take the calls from the observers and set the pips on the map. But more observers see that same plane as it flies over the country. An observer some six miles away from 17 Herald 4 now calls in. Army, flash. Army, go ahead, please. One. One. By motor. By motor. High. High. Scene, 17, Harold 2. 17, Harold 2. Overhead. Overhead. North. North. Thank you. Now Mr. Whitman moves over beside the next plotter and watches her and asks questions. Now, let me understand this. Uh, do you put a pip on the board, too? You just received a report about the same airplane. That's right. I put a pip down also, but my pip goes on 17 Herald 2. Now you can see the flight progress of that plane. See? It's uh, turned and is going north now. Well, where is it headed for? What plane is it? Well, that's not the concern of the plotter. This lady here will explain about that. She's a filterer. Filterer? Uh, you are a filterer? Yes. We filterers stand back of several plotters and watch the pips appear on the board. Well, then, each pip represents one observer's report of a plane, is that it? Yes, so it is up to us to filter. That is, we boil down the information we see appearing here on the board. We interpret that information. But if you get so many pips on the board, I should think it'd become confusing. No, now watch this, Mr. Whitman. You heard those two calls to me. Yes? And you saw two pips appear on the board. Well, now with this rake, I'll pull those pips off now. But then why bother to put them up in the first place? Well, you see, two calls from two observers confirm the character of the flight of the plane. There is no chance of mistake now that two observers have reported the plane. We know there's a plane flying in that area, so we replace the pips with this gadget. Yeah, but what is it? It's called a target stand. 
You can see it's just a little wire rack about nine inches tall. It's on a small base. And I place these celluloid code numbers in its frame. Well, what are those various code numbers? Well, they correspond with the information I believe to be correct. Now, in this case, I put on several different cards which say 1 and B and A. That means one by motor flying high. There is nothing on top of the stand now. That means that at this particular moment, the flight is unidentified. Unidentified? You don't mean it's an enemy plane flying all over our coast? Well, we consider all planes unidentified at first. But who identifies them as friendly or unfriendly? Oh, see the balcony around this side of the room? Yes. See those three or four ladies sitting up there and that army officer walking around supervising them? Yes. Well, what do they do? Well, those women are the tellers. They report the movement of the targets to the operations room. And what is the operations room? That is a secret, Mr. Whitman. But there in the op room, so I understand, are representatives of the Army, Navy, and Civil Aeronautics Administration. They know ahead of time of every friendly plane that is going to be in the air. In other words, all airplane flights today are scheduled? Yes. The proposed route of each plane's flight is reported and approved before a flyer can take off. Well, now, when the teller up on the balcony here telephones into operations room and reports the plane the observer had notified us about, each representative checks his approved flight record for the day. Well, just how do you mean? This is fascinating. Well, for example, there's a plane that is flying this very moment over 17 Herald 2. One of the officials in operations room should identify that plane. Okay. Uh, suppose it's a Navy plane. Well, then the Navy representative would claim the flight. The plane is therefore identified. The teller reports the fact to me or one of the other filterers in this room. We then place a card on top of the target stand to identify it as a friendly plane. Yes, but uh, what happens if the plane cannot be identified? Oh, would you like to ask that question of the officer standing up there on the teller's balcony, Mr. Whitman? You can't tell me? No. Perhaps he has authority to reveal that information. He'll know if it's something that can be told. Oh, I understand. Uh, but first, uh, may I ask you a personal question? Why, I suppose. Uh, what is your work? I mean, your outside responsibility. Well, I suppose you could identify me with local society. I mean, I've always been active in charities, bazaars, benefits, work at the children's hospital, that sort of thing. But this work is so necessary. Mr. Whitman asked a question, if you noticed, that the filterer didn't feel she should answer, although she knew that answer. You recognize how carefully guarded these conversations are. These women have been pledged to reveal no information they learn while working in the filter center. And that's why they change the subject when a friend or even a relative wants to know what they do at filter centers. Certain information can be released, however, just as we're giving it to you now. Information checked and approved by Army Intelligence. Here now is Mr. Whitman up in the teller's balcony asking further questions, this time of an officer in authority in the filter room. Uh, may I ask, sir, suppose one of those planes that show up on the board cannot be identified. Well, every plane must be identified. Well, yes, but uh, what if one can't be identified, sir? Then we must consider that plane an enemy ship. An enemy? Yes, till it's positively proved to be otherwise. We allow only a matter of seconds to identify a plane in the air once it's been reported by an observer. If no officer in the operations room claims the plane is under his department's schedule, then the 4th Fighter Command goes into action at once. What sort of action? The acts of war. War? Yes. First, the cities in the area of the unidentified planes are given an alert. Then the whole civilian defense machine is sent into motion. Uh, you mean air raid wardens, auxiliary police, fire watchers, and such are told to stand by? Right. In the meantime, intercept officers, with the help of other women volunteers, have plotted the course of the unidentified plane as reported to them. Everything works like clockwork, doesn't it? Yes. As do. But just what units are activated, sir? Well, these are the things that happen. Interceptor planes are sent up to identify the plane as friendly or enemy. Anti-aircraft artillery is sent into action. Searchlight batteries swing into operation. Barrage balloons are sent up around vital defense areas. Did you say, sir, our planes are sent up to shoot? Fighter planes are sent up to either identify the plane in question as friendly or enemy. If enemy, their orders are to shoot it down at once. Hey, this is war, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Whitman. That's war right on our own doorstep. We're happy to say we're prepared and ready for the enemy day or night in this country. Well, what impresses me is that uh, vol uh, civilian volunteer ground observers and filter center workers actually do the job of setting the Army's fighting forces into action. And that's a mighty big responsibility to be entrusted with. Yes. The civilian Army is doing a wonderful piece of work. 
and must be congratulated. Well, we aren't forgetting that there's another loyal group of civilian defense workers who are doing an important job, too. You mean the air raid wardens, the fire watchers, and auxiliary police? Yes. And after we've had a few moments recess from this first lesson, we're going to show you how they fit into this vast scheme of protecting and serving the home front. Okay, students, time out for relaxation. Ladies and gentlemen, before we hear from Gordon, here is a very special announcement which we've just received from headquarters of the 4th Fighter Command. The 4th Fighter Command requests us to inform all volunteers of the Aircraft Warning Service that arrangements have been made with the regional office of the Office of Price Administration so that volunteer certification will be granted supplemental gas rations. Now, this will take care of the essential driving done by such volunteers in the interests of the service. Details will be announced at a later date. And now here's Gordon Jenkins and the sports team song, I is the long melody of the official fighting song of the Army Air Corps. I want to ask you all a question. How many of you really know the difference between an air round observer? Well, one serves to soften the vision ever comes. Invasion ever coming. One works for the Citizens Defense Corps, one works for America. Most people know what an air raid warden is and what his duties are. But we wonder if most air raid wardens actually know what makes their division of civilian defense tick. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. A what? I see your white helmet, your gas mask strapped to your shoulder, and your armband. Uh, you're an air raid warden, aren't you? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, just what are your duties in this gigantic civilian defense setup? Well, the way my outfit called a block warden. Block warden? Yeah, I, I'm the warden on the particular street in which my home's located. You sound like a pretty valuable citizen to have around. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Well, you can just call me Joe. The wardens have to put in a lot of hours on duty. Oh, we've got it pretty well worked out. Take me, for instance. I've got to stay home every Thursday night. You know, stick around in case I get a telephone call that there's an alert. You do all your work right in your own home, then? Uh, no, no. You see, once every five weeks, it's my turn to go over to the auxiliary police headquarters in our sector. I stand a three-hour watch. Well, just what goes on at this neighborhood auxiliary headquarters? Oh, not much. There's a phone there. Two phones, to be exact. One's at the headquarters downtown. And the air raid wardens sometimes operate with the police? Yeah, here in our town we do, and some places they work with the sheriff's office. Uh, tell me, what's that direct line to the main police headquarters for, Joe? Well, suppose there's an alert or a blackout. The police headquarters call all the neighborhood auxiliary stations on that direct phone line. They tell us either yellow, blue, or red, as the case may be. So if I'm on duty there, I get right on the regular phone and notify all the senior wardens in our sector. And I suppose the senior wardens immediately call all you block wardens. Well, that's right. All the boys get up and get dressed and swing into operation of their particular street. Joe? Yeah? I want to ask you a question. Maybe it's about something that's never been explained to you. Okay, far away. Well, Joe's the telephone rings in your home in the middle of the night. Your senior warden says yellow. Yeah, well, that means alert, stand by. Well, Joe, where does your senior warden get his... Weren't you listening when I was telling you a minute ago? I said it just... Oh, came... Wait, Joe, I heard in police headquarters at the sheriff's office. But did you ever think, Joe, 
Who told the police to put your city on the alert? Well, I suppose it was... A, I mean... Gosh, I never thought of that angle. I guess they just don't make it up out of their heads, do they? You're right, they don't. Hey, where do the boys downtown get their dope? From the Army, Joe. Man's Aircraft Warning Service. Yeah? You mean the Aircraft Warning Service has something to do with getting the information to us about uh, when we're going to have alerts and blackouts and all clears? Yes. You're all part of America's great civilian defense organization, Joe. Hey, uh, do you know the fellow on your street who lives three doors down from your house? Uh, Bill Brown, isn't it? What about him? He's a ground observer. What the heck is that? You mean he stands around and observes the ground? <laughs> no. No, Bill stands around and observes the skies. You know, you boys ought to get better acquainted. I doubt if Bill Brown knows just what you air raid wardens do either. Oh, but uh, what is a ground observer? You know that little shack up on the top of Lookout Hill? Yeah. Oh, is Bill Brown one of the fellows who go up there to watch for airplanes at night? Not only at night, Joe. Day and night. 24 hours around the clock. Hmm. Well, what about it? Well, people like Bill Brown form the Ground Observer Corps of the Aircraft Warning Service of the 4th Fighter Command. I'll tell you. Let's just see how this whole thing works. Let's suppose Bill Brown sights a plane some night. Okay, so Bill Brown spots a plane. What's he do about it? Bill reports it. We spilled it, Sam. Hey, that plane sure has got a funny-sounding motor. Never heard one like that before. I gotta report it fast. Army flash. Army, go ahead, please. One. One. By motor. By motor. High. High. Scene. Scene. Nine, Oliver, five. Nine, Oliver, five. Overhead. Overhead. North. North. Thank you. Hey, I never saw a plane like that one before. I wonder if that could possibly be an enemy plane. But, Mr. Whitman, who was it Bill talked to? Who was that lady who answered the phone? She was a plotter at the filter center. Yeah? Well, what goes? This is what goes, Joe. Suppose other ground observers have reported the flight of that plane. Suppose that at the Army Information Center in the operations room, high Army, Navy, and Civil Aeronautics Administration officers can't identify that particular plane as friendly. Well, you mean, you mean it's an enemy plane? If it can't be accounted for in a matter of seconds, it's considered an enemy plane, Joe. Oh, but what happens? Something's got to be done. It might really be an enemy and bomb the city. The Aircraft Warning Service, the 4th Fighter Command, goes into immediate action. These are the things that happen. Interceptor planes set up to identify the plane as friendly or shoot it down. Any aircraft artillery is set into action. Searchlight batteries go into operation. Barrage balloons set up around vital defense areas. And Joe, listen... This is where your unit fits into the system. Yeah? How? Here, let's dip into the telephone switchboard room at the information center. Long before that plane ever reaches the city, before fighter planes have gone up to intercept it, before guns have been in range, these civilian volunteer telephone operators were sending out calls on this CARW board over here. Well, what's a CARW board? Well, this is one here. We can't talk about it. It's secret equipment. Those girls are calling direct control centers, generally located at police and county sheriff's headquarters. Listen, Joe. Santa Paula? Red. Red? That means a blackout. Right. The Army is throwing that entire area into a blackout. Venice? Red. You mean these girls are calling main headquarters that give us air raid wardens our information? Yes. Come, Joe. Fast. We're going to go over and look in at the sheriff's office of your county. Here we are now, Joe. Civil air raid warning switchboard at the sheriff's office. Gosh, look at those little red lights come up. Operators are flashing individual sectors of the city. Listen, Joe. I think they're calling the neighborhood auxiliary police out in your sector. Sector 23? Red. Gosh, sector 23, that is my sector. Come on, Joe. Let's get out there to your neighborhood auxiliary station. Let's see who's on duty. Well, it's Monday night. Uh, Jack Jones will be on duty tonight. Here we are, Joe. Do you know that fellow on duty there? Yeah, sure. It's Jack Jones, one of our wardens out here. See what he's doing? Dialing all the senior wardens in this area. Just what I've done when I've been on duty here and there was a blackout. Listen to him, Joe. Hello? George Philbin? You awake, George? Okay, then get this. Red, blackout. Call your warden, Pronto. Gosh, it's wonderful to see it work so fast. Come on, Joe. Let's go over to your senior warden's house. We'll see just what he does. And there's your senior warden sitting in his bathrobe at his phone. Yeah, it's good old George Spelvin, all right. C R five one nine oh one. 
Crestview 51901. Hey, George is dialing me. Gosh. You're, you're one of his wardens, aren't you? Well, yeah, sure, but... Well, come on, Joe. Out of here. Down the street, fast. Here, look. Your own house, Joe. Your bedroom. Listen, Joe. Your phone is ringing. Oh, Joe, you dope. Wake up. Come out of it. Wake up. George Spelman's trying to call you. There's a blackout, a red. Joe, wake up. Joe! Joe! Oh, what's the matter with you? The phone is ringing. Hey, what? What? what huh? The phone. The hey. phone. Oh, what time is it? Who is it, Mary? Answer the phone. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Oh, I think I hear sirens. Hey, hello. Who oh, is it? Huh? Oh, oh, that's you, George? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm awake. A red? A blackout? Yeah, yeah, I'll dress and get right out on the street. Oh, well, where are my socks? Where are my shoes? And don't turn on that light yet, Mary. I know. It's a blackout. Yeah, yeah. Get up. Uh, pull the shades down. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm doing it already. This is the only one up. Uh, now turn on the blackout light. Oh, don't order me around when I'm doing things. Yeah. There. Uh, tie my shoes later. Uh, where's my leather jacket? Oh, here it is. Uh, don't forget the gas mask. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting it. There we are. Good old gas mask. And the tin hat. I fixed the tin strap on your helmet. I hope you know. Oh, it. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, Mary. Now, now, don't you worry, Mary. I'll just be out on the street watching. No, come back here. Mary, don't you understand? I'm in a hurry. I know, but I gotta get out there. <laughs> yes, Joe, but look at you. Look at me. Oh, my God. You forgot your pants. Yeah, but I gotta go. <laughs> well, of course, we were just kidding. No air raid warden ever forgot his trousers when going out on duty. But now we hope Joe Smith, air raid warden, understands more clearly what makes the wheels of civilian defense go round. Joe Smith, the air raid warden, works with the Citizens Defense Corps. Bill Brown, his neighbor up the street, a ground observer, works with the Fourth Fighter Command. Both Joe and Bill, and a lot of other Joes and Bills and Marys and Dorothys, all work for America. It's necessary that each man and woman thoroughly understands his job and the job of the person with whom he works. May the watch cry ever be, Eyes the law. Next week, we will resume our regular Eyes Aloft program, telling true stories of outstanding observers and filter center workers. Next week, another Eyes Aloft gold trophy will be presented, as in the past. And don't forget, if you want to share in the aircraft warning service work of home front protection, call your local civilian defense office. Perhaps you, too, can qualify. This is Jane Whitman saying goodnight to the 150,000 of its civilian volunteers who keep constant vigil of our home front so that America will be safe from any attack by air. Good night. Eyes Aloft is written and produced by Robert L. Redd. Music is composed and conducted by Gordon Jenkins. This is Ken Carpenter charging you to always remember... Eyes Aloft! Eyes Aloft! Watching the sky! Watching the flames flying the lanes up above! Eyes Aloft! Always on guard! Sending a hand, protecting the land we love! Eyes Aloft comes to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh,